Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Dika Rahima. I am from Class A English Education Study Program, School of Postgraduate Studies, Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia. In this occasion, I would like to explain to you my research findings entitled Teachers' Perspectives in Developing Learner Autonomy, the Constraints and Possibilities During the Global Pandemic COVID-19. My explanation will be elaborated into five chapters, starting from the introduction and then the literature review, um, the methodology, the findings and discussions, and the last one is the conclusion and the recommendation. Introduction, there are seven points that I want to explain. Uh, the first one is the burning issue, and then the research questions, the purpose of the study, and the significance of the study. And then the scope of the study, the clarification of key terms, and their related theories. Since the early of 21st century, the theory and practice of autonomy has evolved considerably in response to the changing landscapes of foreign language education. The learner-centered approach has been often chosen as an alternative to conventional teacher-centered classroom instructions, according to Tang. However, teacher-centered learning still dominating the learning activity, where the students still depend on a teacher as the source of knowledge in the classroom, including in Indonesian context. And unfortunately, the world is now facing serious COVID-19, which has caused the schools in most part of the world to be closed, including in Indonesia. Um, in that case, the students and the teachers are not able to do the teaching and learning activity conventionally. As to research questions, firstly is what are the teachers' understanding toward learner autonomy? And the second one is what are the constraints and possibilities exist to the development of learner autonomy during the global pandemic COVID-19. And the purpose of the study, the first one is to find out teacher's perspective regarding learner autonomy and secondly to see the constraints and possibilities in promoting learner autonomy during the pandemic COVID-19 in secondary school of Indonesian EFL setting. For the significance of the study, the study is expected to enrich the existing research in the field of learner autonomy, specifically teachers' perspectives on learner autonomy, as well as the constraints and possibilities in implementing LA during the global pandemic COVID-19 era. And the findings from this study will establish a detailed description between learner autonomy perceived by the teachers and knowledge of learner autonomy presented in the literature review. And the current research limits its study on teachers' perspective on learner autonomy, including the definition of learner autonomy, teacher roles, characteristic of learner autonomy, and some issues regarding the promotion of learner autonomy in Indonesian context, particularly in this global pandemic of the 19th era. While it is not known when the term of learner autonomy was first used as pedagogy, it appeared officially for the first time in Hollex 1981 seminal paper in which he defined autonomy as the ability to take charge of one's learning. This theory will be further explained on the literature review in the next section. In this paper, there are two papers. First is learner autonomy and second is teacher's perspectives. Learner autonomy is learner's willingness and ability to take responsibility to plan, implement, monitor, evaluate students' learning with tasks that are constructed in negotiation with and support from the teacher. While teacher's perspective on learner autonomy refers to teacher's in interpretation of learner autonomy based on their past experience, which is relevant to the classroom situation, while perspective is a specific attitude or manner through which a person thinks about something. The next section provides the literature review of the research. The first one is the concept of learner autonomy, and then previous related research reports and the concluding remarks. Starting from the definition, Hollick 1981 perceives autonomy as the ability to take charge of one's learning. According to him, ability is a power or capacity to do something and not a type of conduct behavior and to take charge of one's own learning, on the other hand, is to have and to hold the responsibility for all of the decisions concerning the setting of the objective of learning and then determining the, con the contents and the progressions, selecting the methods of the learning, monitoring the learning. Two abilities are interdependent and equally important to become autonomous. While Little in 1991 
perceives autonomy as a capacity. So it is a capacity to be able to critically reflect the learning process, be able to obtain great decision making, and has an independent action. While Benson 2011 defines learner autonomy as the capacity to control one's own learning, which leads to significant measure of independence from the control of others, and as it states, uh, control here is involved three aspects, which are control of learning management, control of cognitive processes, and control of learning content. The control over the learning management is understood in terms of strategies that students conduct in order to plan, organize, and evaluate the learning, while the control over cognitive processes is concerned with the idea of controlling itself that play a fundamental role at attention, reflection, and metacognitive knowledge. And lastly, the control over um, learning capacity as well as the right to set and evaluate learners' own learning goals. Meanwhile, according to World Health Organization in 2020, COVID-19 is an infectious disease caused by a coronavirus. Most people infected with the COVID-19 virus will experience mild to moderate respiratory illness and recover without requiring special treatment. Unfortunately, for older people and those with underlying medical problems are more likely to develop serious illness. In Indonesia, per Monday 23rd of November, the total cases of COVID-19 are reaching 502,000 cases with 422,000 patients recovered and 1,602 people dead. The impact of the coronavirus disease 2019 or COVID-19 pandemic is now beginning to spread to the world of education. This is done as an effort to prevent the spread of COVID-19 transmission. It is hoped that if all educational institutions will not carry out activities as usual, this can diminish the spread of COVID-19, according to Abida Hidayatullah Simamur Fehabutar and Mutakinati 2020 reports. I provide six of the very related research reports regarding the learner autonomy. First comes from Lankanawati 2017. So, in 2017, Lankanawati conducted a descriptive study about teachers' belief about LA and its implementation in Indonesian EFL setting. It involves um, teachers from secondary level to tertiary level. The data collected through interview, questionnaire, and FGD to further examine beliefs about learner autonomy. The result shows that LA could be promoted to learners making choices about how they learn and what they an activity they do and through involving them in these choices. And um teachers believe that it nurtured among learners and uh learner autonomy should not be translated as learning without a teacher. And then Warney and Supratiningsi in 2019 conducted a research on developing LA in EFL classes, more importantly, on how feasible it is based on teachers' perception. How teacher perceive learner autonomy will thus influence how much and how teachers promote it. In turn, it will determine the opportunities the learner have to become autonomous. The study involved 105 EFL teachers teaching in secondary level. Uh, using questionnaire, Warney and Supraptiningsi wanted to know how feasibility of LA in their context. And the findings show that the teachers perceived it is possible to involve students in making decision of some aspects related to the classroom learning and different degrees of feasibilities. <laughs> Next, Nabila in 2019 conducted a qualitative study to investigate the perceptions of LA within students and teachers, three students and two teachers teaching at secondary level in Indonesia. The data were obtained through students' questionnaires and teachers' interviews. Based on the results of the interview with the teachers, they have positive perceptions about learner autonomy. The outcomes of the study also show that the teachers believed to be involved in decisions about their learning and that the students have the potential to become more autonomous. The fourth report comes from Burke and Albusaidi, 2012. They investigated language teachers' beliefs and practices of on learner autonomy in Oman. And the data were gathered through questionnaire and interview to 61 English teachers. 
The results show that various ways of teachers' con conceptualization of learner autonomy in terms of strategies for independent and individual learning. The teachers showed positive theoretical deposition to learner autonomy, although they still have optimistic views about feasibilities of promoting it in practice. Furthermore, the teachers viewed uh, that some factors are hindering them in developing learner autonomy, such as lack of motivation, limited experience of independent learning, and institutional factors in terms of fixed curriculum, which limit to learner autonomy. So, Randall and Tomita in 2016 conducted a qualitative research on promoting learner autonomy in Japanese EFL class setting through teachers' professional development. They begin their report by considering the issue of LA in the light of stereotype of Japanese learners as passive and reactive. The authors then address three main points regarding the instructor's understanding of learner autonomy, the obstacles exist to the development of learner autonomy, and the impact of learner on professional development workshops to the development of learner autonomy. The responses of the online questionnaire reflect an overall positive attitude to developing autonomy in the classroom, so is the questionnaire. Providing opportunities for the instructor to share experiences and materials that they have developed has proven to be one of the most significant benefits of providing professional development workshops emphasizing the development of learner autonomy. Anthony in 2017, they investigated the perceptions and classroom practices of teachers in fostering learner autonomy in terms of what teachers think about learner autonomy, as well as the strategies they use to develop learner autonomy in a university setting. The data were collected from five English teachers in one of the universities in Malaysia using purposive sampling. Then it is followed by a semi-structured interview in order to obtain in-depth uh, perceptions and teaching practice revolving around autonomous learning. The results show that although university teachers possessed um, a fair understanding of what learner autonomy uh, involved classroom due to a number of challenges such as lack of teacher readiness and then passive student attitude as well as the relevance and timing of English courses uh, within the university curriculum. This section has provided theoretical background of learner autonomy, learner autonomy in EFL classrooms, theories about teachers in promoting learner autonomy. And a lot of research which focused on learner autonomy has been carried out using various approaches in EFL context. However, a research which focuses on how the teachers perceive LA during the global pandemic, COVID-19, has not been studied widely, especially in the context of secondary level in EFL classroom. Therefore, this present research endeavors to investigate teachers' beliefs in promoting LA during the global pandemic, COVID-19. In the methodology, there are three points that I want to explain. First is the research design, and then the data collection, and the data analysis. The study aims to explore teachers' perspectives as well as their challenges and possibilities in implementing learner autonomy in their secondary during the global pandemic COVID-19. In line with the purposes, this research employs a qualitative research design. The participants in this research are two English teachers in a secondary school and this research is using questionnaire and individual semi-structured interview and due to ethical reasons, approval was sought from the respective teachers and participation in the study was voluntary and each participant was permitted to withdraw any time during the data collection process. For the data analysis, teachers' perspectives toward learner autonomy identified from the questionnaire was coded into five major themes, which include teachers' perspectives toward the definition of learner autonomy, and then the characteristics of learner autonomy, teachers' roles in promoting autonomy, the process of developing learner autonomy in the classroom. Secondly, teacher statements from interviews were attached uh, in the section to strengthen the data from questionnaire and to answer the second research question regarding the constraints and possibilities in, in implementing learner autonomy during the global pandemic. The fourth section of this presentation consists of finding and discussion of the research. The findings and the discussions consist of questionnaire and interview. The results from the questionnaire show that 
uh, both of the participants indicated strong agreement with the statements that learner of all ages can develop learner autonomy and the teachers disagree or strongly disagreed with the statement that developing learner autonomy is only possible with adult learners. And then, concerning the meaning of learner autonomy, the two teachers indicated agreement with statement indicating that autonomy includes the ability for the learners to make choices about how they learn and what they learn, to choose their own learning material, and to have some control over the activities they do. The teachers also believe that the process of developing learner autonomy was enhanced when learners were given opportunities to learn from each other as learner autonomy is promoted by activities that encourage learners to work together. However, the teachers did not believe that learner autonomy excludes the involvement of the teacher, but rather than the teachers continue to have a strong influence on supporting learner autonomy. This is in line with what Lankanawatis state that uh, autonomy should be nurtured among learners, translated as learning without a teacher. Here, characteristics of learner autonomy, the teachers disagree that learner autonomy is a concept which is non-suited to non-Western learners. This result was similar with the findings from Barnard and Lee 2016 that emphasized learner autonomy can be implemented within Asian context. In regard with benefit of autonomy, learner autonomy has a positive on success as a language learner. This is similar to what Cook and Hung 2016 and Byram 2012, who state that LA can enhance success to our day learners. In addition, Lankanawati 2017 asserts that LA is a vital factor in accomplishing successful teaching and learning outcomes to handle existing educational problems. Moving on into the result of the interview, during the interview about a way to make the students learn independently but they still need teacher guidance in decision making and um, the other teacher states that learner autonomy is an approach which engages students to study independently in their own ways. This is similar to what Benson 2011 states that autonomy was seen as a natural product of the practice of self-directed learning in which the objectives, progress, and evaluation of learning are determined by the learners. In addition, Little 1991 defines autonomy as having capacity for detachment, critical reflection, decision making, and independent action relation. When the teachers were asked about the characteristic of learner autonomy, one teacher said that responsibility and motivation are one of the characteristics of learner autonomy, while the other teachers say that the characteristics of learner autonomy is when the learners are able to know their strengths and weaknesses, capable to make their own ways to learning, and capable to know their learning style. These interview findings will answer the second research question, which is... What are the constraints and possibilities that the teachers encountered during global pandemic COVID-19? First, I'm going to reveal the possibilities that come from the teacher first. So, one teacher say that during this crisis, education system requires varied, flexible, and authentic learning activities. In this regard, the authentic learning experiences resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic could be used to contextualize students' realities during the pandemic. This represents an opportunity to rethink curricular content and approaches, and this approach will lead the student to be more independent so they are able to promote learner autonomy. While another teacher states that this crisis can support students' independent learning, the students can organize their work better, take more initiative, think more critically, and be more involved, responsible, as well as make them more motivated. When it comes to the constraints, one teacher say that for the selection of the materials or the way the students learn, I believe that it can promote learner autonomy, but I cannot give immediate feedback as my problem in the class during COVID-19. When given assessment or evaluation, it is better if the teachers guide the learners face-to-face. -face. And the other teachers say that, however, including the student-teacher relationship that is so crucial as well for my student success. I believe this has to be my challenge to promote learner autonomy during this global pandemic. The last chapter consists of the conclusion in this research and the recommendation for further research. 
As a conclusion, teachers define learner autonomy equated to other terms such as self-study and independent learning without disregard or excluding teachers' role in encouraging learner autonomy. And the results from the questionnaire indicated that both of the teachers have an awareness of their roles in promoting learner autonomy and creating an environment to support the promotion of learner autonomy. And then, lack of teacher-student relationship is seen as the major constraint in implementing learner autonomy during the global pandemic COVID-19. And lastly, the possibilities is that the current learning must be varied, flexible, and provide authentic learning activities. In addition, students can organize their work better, take more initiative, think more critically, and be more involved, responsible, as well as make them more motivated. So, here are the references that I used in this presentation. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask me. I am more than happy to share my thoughts with you regarding this issue of learner autonomy. That's it. That's all from me. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bye.